one of the most interesting conversations that I like to generate in and around fashion is looking at the best and worst trends for the year. I've made this type of video three years running and when I look back on the trend analysis that I gave in 2021 and in 2022, it's dramatically different than what we're gonna be looking at here today for the year 2023. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Drew, what it do, it's nice to meet you. Let's talk fashion trends. As a disclaimer, I think it's important to state that everything exclaimed in this video is merely an opinion. If my idea about a particular topic differs from your idea, attack the idea, not the individual. Additionally, this is meant to be a fun conversation. So please, by all means, let your voice be heard down in the comment section. Starting with footwear, I think the biggest launch of the year happened in February with the announcement and the subsequent launch of the big red boots by Mischief. Sensationalized fashion was something that I personally predicted in January of 2023. And it's almost as as though I had a crystal ball, the way in which things played out so quickly in the year with Mischief's red boots. The big red boots are the ultimate symbol of what I think is the biggest moment for footwear in 2023, at least as it relates to fashion internet memes, culture, and fashion footwear as a whole. The marketing rollout for these boots was considered genius by some and very obnoxious by others. But all in all, I think most people can agree that this moment for the year year in terms of footwear, in terms of just fashion moments was significant. I personally believe that the big red boots sit somewhere in the middle between being the best and the worst trends for this year. And to me, what the big red boots signify to the fashion world is that more so than functionality, more so than interesting or I guess you could argue that it's interesting design, but more so than design, that attention is what matters the most in the fashion world. And when I say that, I mean in order to drive sales for a particular product, the catalyst or one of the biggest catalysts for that product to actually sell is that you have to garner an unfathomable amount of attention for that item. And if you can get that attention, it's almost more important than any other factor that is involved with promoting that product. If the big red boots were the overall largest moment in footwear, then I think that the Adidas Samba took the crown as the trendiest sneaker of the year. In 2021, I said it was the year of the Jordan 1s and Nike Dunk Lows. In 2022, I said it was the year of New Balance, the New Balance 550, and other models like it. In 2023, I do have to say that I think the Adidas Samba has truly taken the crown for trendy sneakers. And why I think it's one of the best trends in footwear in 2023 is accessibility. Like the Nike Dunk Low in 2021, particularly the Panda colorway, the Adidas Samba is a great entry level, easy to buy, general release item of footwear. It looks good with shorts, it looks good with pants, it carries this little bit of like city boy or city girl aesthetic with it that goes really well with the current meta for what fashion is in 2023. It's been worn by celebrities, it's been co-signed by influencers and there's probably a good chance that some of you are wearing a pair of adidas sambas while watching this video or you have a pair in your closet right now i plan on making a more in-depth video talking and kind of dissecting the popularity that is the adidas samba but for right now i'll say i love the moment that is the adidas samba and i'm really not happy but just kind of like it's cool that the adidas samba is the trendiest sneaker for the year 2023 especially for how long it's been around and some people might argue and say that the adidas samba is getting played out but that's kind of what i would consider to be the natural progression of trends. Things get popular, then they get saturated, and then the item of footwear or whatever the item is gets replaced by something that is new and exciting. Three additional trendy items of footwear include Mary Jane's, kitten heels, and ballet flats. We are focused more on women's wear here, but I still think that these three specific items of footwear are some of the best trends that the year has produced. Let me explain. When it comes to footwear and when we compare women's wear to men's wear I think that there is a bit of a kind of shackled nature that comes along with men's wear that you don't get in design and in feel 
when it comes to items that are made for women or women's wear. That was a really weird way to say it, but hopefully you get what I'm saying. Essentially, there's a particular rigidity that sometimes shackles menswear, in my opinion. It happens less and less, of course. I think menswear is opening up and kind of developing its own really unique and fun things but in the case of ballet flats kitten heels and mary janes i just think that they're really fun and exciting items of footwear and i don't really see an equivalent in the limelight for mainstream footwear for menswear and subsequently that's why i love seeing stylish confident women in these variants of shoes a lot of people might disagree with me on that point and i totally understand if you do because there are definitely expressive and unique items of footwear for men that exist in the world the only difference is, is that they aren't trending like these three variants are for women's wear at least in my opinion what do you think guy or girl about mary jane's ballet flats or kitten heels i'd be so curious to hear your thoughts down in the comments. Let's rapid fire some of the other trendiest items of footwear before we move on. On my list, I have the Adidas Campus 2000s, Onitsuka Tiger Mexico 66s, Nike Vomero 5s, Adidas Gazelles, and that's about where I would end my list for first ballot trendy items of shoes or trendy shoe items. Let me know what I missed. Of course, I'm gonna miss something, but I'm curious to know, let me know what I missed. The biggest trend in general when it comes to pants is that wider typically means better and more fashionable in more instances. There's a limit to how wide your pants can actually get without you looking literally like a fool, but I think in 2023, we've really pushed the boundary for what that limit is. And in 2022, I'd mentioned the introduction in the trend of parachute pants. And I think in 2023, what you find is that more people take wider pants into consideration when it comes to an outfit being stylish or an outfit being just trendy than ever before and i just think wide fitting wider fitting pants are what is the current meta for what it means to be stylish in 2023 not to say that there aren't stylish people wearing straight or even skinnier fitting pants the moment is just wide fitting pants you see it reflected in cargo pants denim dress pants, trousers, and so many other variants. To me, wide-fitting pants are just so ubiquitous when it comes to social media fashion. I like this trend, and I personally advocate for people wearing more wide-fitting pants. I tend to find them more comfortable and more breathable, and they do make for really interesting silhouettes when you compose an outfit properly. The wide adoption of wide-fitting pants is definitely one of the best trends to come out of the year, 2023. Another big trend that has taken place this summer specifically has been jorts. Now, jorts were trendy in 2022, but I think they took a big step and reached new heights in 2023. And the same sentiment that can be applied to pants getting wider can also be applied to jorts getting wider. Jorts are just massive these days. A lot of people advocate for you to wear them below the knee. They want them to be very, very wide and creates a unique look. It creates a unique look that's definitely distinct from what the jorts that were being worn in 2022. It seems that the big, wide-legged, almost ballooned out jorts are a trend within a trend that is taking place. Hopefully that makes sense. Also the jorts with boots trend or the shorts with boot trend is another micro trend that's taking place in and around this whole jorts conversation. And I just personally love seeing it. I think it's so fun the way people are styling things in creative ways. And this is something that both menswear and women's wear is doing. And I just, I think it's cool. I know a lot of people hate jorts and you're probably justified in your reasoning for hating jorts, but to me, Jorts have been incredibly fun to kind of just window shop at. I don't really wear that many jorts, but it's been incredibly fun to just see all of the outfits that have been generated from jorts as the focal point of the outfit. Skirts are pretty timeless, and if they're not timeless, then they're iconic. But one trend that's been really fun to see with skirts has been how skirts have been used as layering pieces for outfits. Not just outfits, for so many creative outfits at that. Skirts have been layered with t-shirts, crop tops, dresses, button-ups, and in just really unique and creative ways that I've 
really been a fan of. Sorry if this isn't a high level analysis on skirt layering, but hopefully someone has been seeing what I've been seeing as it relates to the relationship of wearing skirts and layering and how it's just been a very kind of trendy combination that maybe hasn't been spoken about, but it definitely exists at least online. A trend that deserves its own section is the movement to crop every shirt. I've mostly seen this in menswear, but I've also seen women do this as well. But it seems like men or boys have just discovered the benefit to cropping shirts to create unique outfits. And not to sound above it all, because I said men and boys, but not to sound above it all, even myself, I wear more cropped shirts than I probably would have ever imagined I would wear two years ago. But the cool thing about this trend is that you don't have to necessarily go out and buy a cropped shirt. The trend is actually DIYing, cutting a shirt or an item of clothing or a top that you already have and cropping it yourself, which is awesome. And I think anytime that you don't necessarily need to go out and buy or spend money on a new item and you can just craft it or DIY it yourself, it's a huge benefit not only to your pocketbook, to your money, to your savings, but also to the environment. Crop shirts are also amazing for layering. So if you want to show a particular base layer of an outfit, it can be really easily managed if you have a cropped top. And I know women and womenswear has been doing this for eons, it seems like, and menswear is just kind of catching up. But it's true. Like, a lot of guys are realizing like if I crop my shirt or if I have something a little bit shorter above the waist or something that's at the waist, it creates this really cool visual effect for the outfit that's just very visually pleasing. Cropped tops also denote a bit of intentionality and I think people pick up on these kind of things when they're looking at an outfit. They might not recognize that, oh, it's the crop top that makes this outfit look good, but they do pick up on something that's a little bit different than what the average Joe or the average Jill is wearing on the street. I think the biggest trend in accessories is one that not many people have talked about, but it is carabiners on belt loops and the accessorizing of your belt loop or your waistband. Before 2023, I never, and I do mean never saw as many people taking to their waistband or their belt loop and accessorizing this portion of their outfit, especially to such a degree. From fancy carabiners to holding cameras, holding your keys or just other small keychain items, I think that this trend is something that I'm not just imagining. It's happening, but no one is talking about it. And I love this trend. I think it not only adds a bit of extra oomph, as accessories always do it to an outfit, but it's also super functional, especially when you add your keys or something like that to your waistband. When function and fashion intertwine, that is definitely when I think something is worth it, in my opinion. And to me, I just don't see the harm in this trend whatsoever. And like I said, I've noticed like fancy carabiners being used. One of the ones that I've looked into is not, it's not a carabiner. It's from a company called Good Art, if I'm not mistaken. And it's a product called the Belt Loop Buddy. And it's essentially what a carabiner is. It just doesn't have a locking or cinching mechanism like a carabiner does but it's really cool and you can add different things on the keychain that you can use not only for the functionality of it but for the styling capabilities of it which i sound really nerdy right now but i do have a whole youtube channel about fashion so i have to be a fashion nerd a little bit has anyone else noticed the insurgency of carabiners or waistband accessories like i have let me know down in the comments. I am so curious to hear your response. I'm so curious. Another awesome trend that I just I just love seeing this styled is the use of bows and ribbons in women's wear as an accessory. I just, to me, I just love how accessories elevate an outfit and just add a bit of extra character to the outfit. I think once you kind of nail and understand fit, proportions, your sizing, kind of what your style is, the moment you add accessories to your outfit, it just creates this kind of cherry on top effect for the outfit. It almost supersedes every other element. The accessories really stand out and they become the most poignant aspect of the outfit. And bows and ribbons are exactly that. As a man, I find this styling super feminine 
And once again, another example of how men's wear and women's wear are definitely not on the same level playing field when it comes to creating and generating outfits. And I would definitely put this in the category of one of the best trends, one of the most interesting trends for the year 2023. Oh yeah, I almost forgot this one. The last trend that I wanna highlight in terms of accessories is the use of wired headphones as a waistband belt loop not explain that correctly the use of wired headphones as a belt loop for your waistband does that make sense this is more of a niche trend i'm not even really sure if it's a trend but i thought i'd mention it just to include it in one of my records for the internet or just to include it in this video essentially people are using wired headphones as a replacement for a belt this feels very y 22k instead of y 2k but I think it's pretty cool nonetheless. Moving on, I think one of the most trending ideas in and around fashion is this idea of online fashion versus IRL or in real life fashion. And this idea is simply rooted in the stark contrast between what you see online on social media versus what you see when you step outside your home. Fashion in the real world tends to be much less stimulating than online. And often it feels like a lot of these trends and a lot of these ideas that we talk about here on this channel or I talk about on Instagram or TikTok seem to exist in a vacuum. Now, don't get me wrong, you will see the Adidas Samba out in the real world. You will see jorts out in the real world, maybe styled in a way that isn't very fashionable, but regardless, that's not the point here. But the average person just doesn't care about fashion. That's just the truth of the matter. So unless you're in London or New York or Tokyo, you won't really see fashion forward people on a day-to-day -day basis, especially if you live in the United States. Now, this is changing for some cities. More cities are developing and nurturing their creative or artistic districts and communities. Take Denver, for example. It's the city where I'm from, where I'm filming this video in, where I've lived for the majority of my life. And I would say over the last three years that I've become more fashion conscious, the city has inched closer and closer to including and incorporating and emphasizing more fashion forward individuals and just more creative people in general who understand the culture at large that's taking place on social media but 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 it's still eons behind something like what new york city is here in the u.s another fashion idea that i want to coin is the nichification of fashion which essentially is focused on the fact that there is no ultimate guiding style for what is fashionable some of you might be like well, duh. And maybe this has to do with youth, but I remember a time when Supreme, Bape, and brands like these brands were just the pinnacle of style. And to look cool, in order to be cool, you had to dress in one of these brands. You had to have this brand to be representative of what it means to be cool. And like I said, I, I, I think that maybe comes with youth and not understanding that the world has so many different perspectives and ideas that are uh, available and I can totally take that as a valid criticism of this idea. But nowadays, you just have so much choice, right? You have people who wear tabbies, people who like streetwear, people who like dark academia, grunge, Y2K, dadcore, gorpcore, um, normcore, Birkenstocks. You have, you have so many different choices that I think in the fashion world today that there are just so many people who put great outfits on who have totally different style that... You know, as a young person or as someone who, you know, just wants to improve their style, you have so many choices and there isn't just one right way or run one wrong way. There's all these beautiful ranges of really creative and unique outfits and personalities within fashion that is really, really cool. Basically, there's just a lot of genres. And I think that's one of the best things about fashion in 2023. Whether it's a trend or not is up to for you to decide down in the comments. But I'll say that one of the best trends in 2023 is the fact that there are so many genres of fashion and there are so many people who can feel accepted and wanted and feel like they're doing something cool within that genre and not be like picked on or ostracized. And um, yeah, 
I don't mean to ramble, but the nichification of fashion is real and it's definitely one of the best parts about 2023 fashion. What I'm calling one of the worst trends of 2023 is what happened with Shein and the influencer trip. And I'm calling it like I titled it in my notes, Shein Gate 2023. But I think it's one of the worst trends of 2023 what am i talking about let me explain i don't plan to get into the weeds about the entire story of Shein's influencer trip but i think fast fashion recognizes that it's in a bit of a dilemma it recognizes that it's in a bit of a pickle a lot of people and a lot more people continue to voice their qualms about the inequities that fast fashion brings to the environment and to people working within its systems and one of the biggest corporate fashion trends is the attempt to clean up the image of these fast fashion companies. And I think Shein's influencer trip is one of the biggest examples in recent time of this. And I call it a worse trend because I think sustainability and ethics within fashion has never been more confusing or just misunderstood in the industry. And I think as long as things are misunderstood and as long as things are confusing for the consumer, business will continue to perpetuate itself as business as usual and things won't change things won't be more sustainable things won't be more equitable or more ethic eth ethicable things won't be better okay they just won't be better if things are confusing so and i think it's in the company's best interest to make it as confusing or to propose an image of of uh utopia within these facilities when in, in reality a lot of people know that there is a lot of harm being done especially when it comes to the fast fashion side of things. Okay, so we've made it to kind of the later half of the video. Shout out to you for staying all the way through to the end. Most people don't have the attention span to stay through a full YouTube video like this, especially all the Gen Zers and everybody who's on TikTok right now. I'm a Gen Z, I'm on TikTok, so don't take it personally if oh, I just called you out, okay? It, it, it's me too, okay? But I have some honorable mentions that I want to include in this video, but I didn't know how to categorize them. So I kind of want to not rapid fire them, but I kind of want to give them to you in this section that I'm calling honorable mentions. Starting with selvage and raw denim. I think there's been a mini movement and an increased interest in selvage and raw denim. Maybe not at the macro level, so I don't even really know if it's really a trend. I've talked a lot about selvage denim and raw denim, and I don't want to say that I'm the reason why it's trending, which I would never conflate like something as massive as a trend with myself. But I think more and more people are talking about selvage denim, and it's something that's interesting to people. Raw denim is interesting to people. Japanese denim is interesting to people. It always has been. It's always been a niche within fashion. Mm -hmm. But I think that maybe in 2024, maybe in 2025, it could reach um, a, it could poke its head through and become something that I would truly consider to be a trend of the year. But right now, it is kind of like an honorable mention trend. It's a movement, but it's not like a trend trend. Barbie core, for obvious reasons, the Barbie movie was one of the biggest cultural moments in the year 2023. And I think it's inextricably linked to the year. It just will be, 2023 will be the year that Barbie came out and all of the pink outfits and vernacular that sprouted from Barbie core not only touched just mainstream culture, but also touched fashion culture as well. And it's, I just, that's important to mention, okay? It's important to mention. I would also say that we're going through a bit of an evolution as it relates to the genre that most people would call streetwear. After the passing of Virgil Abloh, I think streetwear has been in one of the most interesting places that it's ever been in. Conflate that or combine that with the fact that Kanye West had lost his sneaker deal or whatever it was with Adidas and everything that was going on with that, but now he's back. I just think that it's interesting where streetwear is. It's kind of hard, at least in my opinion, to pinpoint what exactly is streetwear in 2023. Some people will say, well, you know, streetwear is what streetwear is, is what people are wearing on the streets. But I like when I look at, and I always bring it back to this, Emily on door, like people will say Emily on door is streetwear. It has a lot of elements of menswear, like traditional menswear in it. Um, people will say like grunge or Y2K or um, destroy lonely, destroy lonely or what's the uh, Playboy Cardi aesthetic or something like that is streetwear. And that has its own unique and different look from the Emily on doors of the world. So it's kind of hard to say like what streetwear is, but it also ties hand in hand with what I was saying earlier, which is. You know, there are so many niches within fashion. Why can't streetwear, the genre, have multiple subcategorical genres within it? And I think that's what's taking place. And as someone who, like I said, who was young and thought streetwear was this, 
it's interesting to see how it's changed and evolved over time. Last, I think that there have been a lot of Korean specifically brands that have made their voice, made their designs, made their energy known to the Western fashion world. And I think it goes hand in hand with the proliferation of Korean cultural exports that's taking place in, in music and in media. Why would it not also include fashion as well? I just think it would be remiss of me not to mention the influence of Korean streetwear, Korean designers, and just overall Korean fashion, um, not to discount other uh, Southeast Asian or Asian or African or European designers in the world. I just, I think that that specific country, South Korea, Korean um, country is definitely making noise in 2023. That is my 2023 trend analysis. What did I miss? Let me know down in the comments. I always love making this video and I'll definitely be making another one for 2024. And as always, I'm spreading peace, love, and positivity in 2023. So that means I'm spreading peace, love, and positivity to you for me. Wherever you are in the world, have a wonderful rest of your day. Abianto. Peace. Yo, what is good post vid vid? That was a video of a video, man. That was that was that a video of a video. I don't even know what I'm saying. That was just a long video. It took me a long time to record this. I'm not forgetting the fist bumps. Here we go. Bop. Thank you so much for staying to the end of this video. Here's the second fist bump. Bop. Thank you so much. I appreciate you for staying to the end. You have no idea. For the post vid vid question of the day, I have down here. Do you think fall winter 2023 will have bigger moments than the first half of the year? Essentially, I make this video in August every year, and obviously August is not the end of the year, so if I was actually someone who was accurate to the idea of best and worst trends of said year, I'd make this video in like December, but I don't know. I think that the main trends of the year are what they are in 2023 already, and August, or excuse me, fall and winter, they'll have their own moment, but it's going to be totally different than what the first half of the year will be. So maybe I'll have to make a fall winter edition, but let me know what you think down in the comments. Do you think that the fall and winter of 2023 will have a bigger moment? I'm losing light. As you can see, it's getting cloudy. It's getting sunny. Regardless, hopefully you have a blessed and wonderful rest of your day. I truly mean that from the bottom of my heart. Have a wonderful day. Get If you're in school, get back to school. Get those grades up. Or if you're an artist, if you're creative, if you're working, whoever you are in the world, just do the best you can with what you have. I'm sending all the good vibes, all the good energy. Hopefully, it's pouring through your screen right now for real. Um, yeah, I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.